The woman you see about to be interviewed by the police is Pam Hub. In August of 2016, Pam made a phone call to 911, claiming that she was being robbed by 33-year-old Louis Gumpenberger. 911, where's your emergency? Hey, hello, there's someone broken in my house. Help! What's Help. the address you're at? Hello! Woman, you see you, you, woman, you your wife? No, I'm not getting in the car with you, no. What's your address? Get out, get out, get out! Help. Pam, what's the address you're at? Uh, help. Help. I have somebody breaking in. During the call, Pam fired all of the bullets in her gun at her attacker, then went outside to wait for the police. Louis was pronounced dead at the scene, and Pam was brought in for questioning. Pam's first concern before the interrogation begins is that she is being recorded. Did you ask him about the film? Um, what are you talking about? Do we, is this going to be filmed? Because I always appear on the news then, from Chris Hayes. Oh, well, okay, I don't know about Chris Hayes, but in an in incident such as this, okay, to protect you, to protect me, um, we're, we're going to record it, okay. okay, just because um, that way, you know, it doesn't look like you're hiding anything, it doesn't look okay. like I'm hiding anything. Um, okay. That way I don't misconstrue something you say down the road, you know, like I misinterpreted something you said, or I thought you said one thing and you actually okay. said another. So, okay. So I, again, I appreciate you coming up here and talking to us. Um, I, I know that you wanted to come up here instead of um, talking to the scene, which is great. Um, I guess, is there a, just out of curiosity, is there a reason why you came up? Is it cooler here or something? No. Temperature wise? The officer said that I'd have to go back to here to oh. repeat everything. Oh, okay, okay, okay. So I didn't, ask, I didn't want to. But <laughs> Well, I appreciate you coming up here with us, okay? And, and we'll take you home. Um, oh, I just want to go anywhere but there. Anywhere but there? So that fair was enough. fine to come here. Fair yeah. enough, fair enough. During the investigation into the shooting, the police found a note in Louis's pocket. This read, Kidnap Hub. Get Russ's money from Hub at her bank, then kill Hub. Take Hub back to the house and get rid of her. All of the evidence, including the 911 call, seemed to be staged and the police knew something wasn't right. As they uncovered more evidence in this case, what they found was shocking. Um, I got home, opened up the garage, pulled in, got my dog, walked him out in front so he could go pee, and he did, he did his thing. Um, went back, put him inside, gave him a treat. <clears throat> Came back out, I'm gonna run back up to the mall. Uh, I'm supposed to pick up a purchase that I from Best Buy and make an appointment. My appointment's Friday, I was gonna run up there, see if I could get it early. Um, so I was gonna run back up there, and as I, st I started pulling out and got halfway out, I noticed as I was backing up that a car came down really fast on the cross street and whipped around right in front of my driveway, because I'm right at the end. Here's the cross street and here's my driveway. So they came out, and did this right in front of my driveway. And I looked up because it was so fast and startling. And somebody jumped out and I was like, wow, somebody, I don't know what I thought, if somebody was hurt, I don't know what was going on. It was so fast. And then he ran up, I was halfway out to drive where I was parked, and he jumped in my car. He opened up the door and jumped in my car. Which door? The uh, passenger. Front or back? Oh, front. Or passenger front. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. And um, he had a bunch of stuff in his hands. I don't know what he had, but he had a knife also, but he had something in his other arm. I don't know what he had. And um, he put a knife and kept going, um, just yelling random stuff like, you're going to take me to the bank and get Russ's money. Take me to the bank. You're going to take me to the bank. He put a knife up to my throat there and was yelling stuff. And um, he kept looking behind him like this. So I didn't, I put it in gear and I was thinking how it's gonna get out of there when he was looking and he kept yelling, coming back and then he looked back again and I hit his arm with the knife and then shot out of the car and ran inside. Okay, so you were, I just wanna make sure I understand. So you were, all, you'd already been home, fed the dog, gave him the street, and you were getting ready to leave. So when you when you got home, did you leave the car in the driveway or did you pull in the garage? I was in the garage. Okay, so you pulled the car all the way in? Yes. 
And then you got out and you tied it to the dog. No, I did not pull it in the garage. I always pull it in the garage when I'm going to stay. But no, I stayed right there because I was leaving. Okay, so, so right where it was. So where it was still where it was, running. Yeah, okay. I just ran in to to let him out. Okay, so you were only in the house just a couple, couple minutes just, more. Oh, not even a couple minutes. Just enough to put his leash on. I brought him out, walked him, blah blah blah. Okay, all that kind of stuff. How do you go in the house when you pulled in the driveway to go in? How did you go in the house through what door? The garage door. The garage, big one was open, and I ran through the garage door. Pam was a very greedy person, and she knew how to manipulate those around her to get what she wanted. It all began in 2013, when Pam's mother, Shirley, would mysteriously pass away, and Pam would inherit a very large life insurance policy. Shirley's housekeeper would find her underneath the balcony of her apartment, where it appeared that the railing had been broken. The coroner's report would state, that Shirley had passed away due to an accidental fall. The strange part was not how she fell, but how there was eight times the normal dose of sleeping pills in her system. Also, Pam was the last one to see her. Kind of rushed through that, I just want to make sure I understand. So you went in, you let the dog out, you gave a treat, you're ready to leave again, so you come back out of the house, how did you exit the house how? Out the same door. Same door, okay. Yeah, I let him in the same door, because the front door was locked. Okay. So it was coming in, out, I come in and out that door. Um, came out that door, got back in the car. Okay. To go again. Okay. And that's when the car shot around and somebody jumped out. Before I knew it, they were sitting next to me. Okay, so let's first describe the car. Can you, can you give a description of the vehicle? Well, I wasn't really paying attention to the vehicle, more of the um, shriekness of their tires that they did. It was a, just a silver, um, wasn't as small as like a little Toyota, a little bit bigger, but not a big one sedan. It was four doors. So four door, mm -hmm. mid, you would say mid-size? Yeah, that? probably mid-size. Wasn't brand new. Um. I mean, as you reflect back, do you remember anything, anything specific about other than being silver, being four doors, anything on the, you said it, it wasn't that new No, or else? it wasn't like shiny, like you could tell it was, like my crash, I just had a 2004 Honda, kind of like older like that, you know, not that it was a piece of crap or anything, but it was, yeah. It was a veteran car. Yeah, grocery getter. And then, um. That's all I remember about it. it. was just so fast. Like, I wasn't really even looking at the car. It was like, what's this hastiness that this car's doing? This quickness. I didn't know what was going on. It was just getting, it was just weird. It was getting weird. And it was like, because they tore around and he popped out. And I'm like, my first thought was, did I know him? Because they did it so fast, but then I was like, and I looked back down, and next thing I knew, he was there. So. Okay. So, as I I was I was up there for a few minutes, and I noticed that there was a, an orange car parked on the street. That's my next door neighbor's. It's okay, it's your neighbor's down. car. Okay, mm -hmm. I wasn't sure. I didn't know where it's that came from. Down. Okay. And there the next person that would pass away, leaving Pam with more life insurance money, would be a woman named Betsy Farrier. Betsy had been diagnosed with breast cancer, and Pam would do everything she could to help her. Pam would work very hard to build trust with Betsy. Eventually, Betsy would make Pam the sole beneficiary of her $150,000 life insurance policy. She did this because she believed her husband Russ would spend all of the money. Pam promised that she would take the money and set up a trust for Betsy's daughters. The problem was, there was a good chance Russ might fight for the life insurance once his wife passed away. To solve this problem, Russ would be set up for the murder of his wife. And I looked up again, the guy had shot out. When he pulled around, a guy like shot out. And I looked down again and thought, it's kind of strange. I don't even know if I thought it was strange, but it was weird. And so I looked up again as he was getting out and he squealed right off. The guy squealed right off. like. I assume he shut the door, but I don't even know because I wasn't looking at that. I could hear it in that, and I was more looking at, like, who's getting out of the car, you know? Is it somebody I know? Because they're right in front of my driveway. Okay. So, 
So that guy squeals away, the other guy jumps in the passenger seat of the car. Uh, I know you described him as having a knife in one hand and something else in he has the other. Some, yeah, well, he had popped in when he opened up the door and I don't know what I even what I was thinking. I don't even I don't even know. He just was in there so fast, but I know he was jumbling something in this arm and had a knife in the other hand. And then um, he switched somehow, I don't know if he set his stuff down or dropped it, I don't know what he did, but he had to put the knife in the other hand then. So, um, and that's when he put it up here. Okay, you're, me. you're using your right hand, Is that, are you right or left hand? I'm right handed. Okay, did you use your right hand because you're right handed or did you use your right hand because that's how you recall it went happened or? Um, that's how I recall that it happened because he had something in his right hand when he first got in and then the first few seconds I didn't see a knife or anything I know he just had stuff you know and I was just like freaked out and then all of a sudden he dropped stuff and then he had a knife so I don't I'm guessing right okay so what if anything did he say he said you're gonna take me to the bank and get Russ's money we're going now so get going type stuff and he just kept yelling stuff like that at me and um, so at this time I still don't I don't have it in gear or anything or I do have it no I don't have it in gear and I had put it in gear to go because I didn't know what to do and then I that's when I noticed he was looking back I don't know what if he was looking because cars I don't know what he was looking at but he kept looking back and I noticed that so I put it back in the gear and he said get going right now we're going to the bank and then he looked back again like this and I hit his arm and I shot out of the car. So when you say I put it back in the gear mm -hmm. you mean you put it back in park? Mm -hmm. Okay. So right. my plan was to get out of the car somehow. So when he came up and approached you at the car door and got in your the vehicle was in reverse with your foot on the brake? Yes. Okay. Our, oh, I don't know I don't know if it was still in park or in reverse. I don't know. I'm not sure. Okay, so we described, you kind of described the guy in the silver. I think it was in reverse, but I'm, I can't swear to it. I don't know if I put it in reverse when he said, let's go, or if I already had it in reverse. I don't know because I kept looking at him and kind of what was, I was miscombobbled on what the hell was going on with the situation. And next thing I know, he's there. Okay. At that point, You know what? I don't think I, I think I, no, it wasn't, I wasn't in gear. My car was running. I had left my car running when I came out. I came out, so it was in park. On December 27th, 2011, Russ returned home from work to find Betsy unresponsive with over 50 knife wounds in her body. After seeing the grisly crime scene, the police named Russ as their prime suspect. Russ was arrested and he would take the case to trial. Pam would testify against Russ, claiming that Russ was a terrible husband who would tell his wife that he couldn't wait for her to die. Pam's testimony against Russ would be the final nail in his coffin and he would receive life in prison for something he did not do. The driver of the vehicle to the best, you know, to the best of your ability, what you saw, describe the guy that got in the vehicle with you. The guy who got in with me, he had on shorts, he had on blue shorts, shortish hair, sandy blonde. Um, and, and now, forgive me, I, I have not, I did not go in the scene. I've not been in the okay. scene. So is he a white male, black male, oh, I'm sorry. Hispanic male? He's white male. White male. Um, he was taller than me. Um, he had blue gym shorts on um, and some sort of t shirt and okay. sandy blonde hair. And I want to say his eyes were blue, but I'm not sure. It's not like they were like a bright blue or anything like that noticeable. But I want to say they were light colored eyes. They weren't brown, okay. I don't think. I could be wrong. I really wasn't looking at his face. Notice anything, any smells? He didn't, no, he didn't smell. The only thing I noticed was is he's yelling and getting more and more upset. He was slurring his words. I thought he was drunk. I didn't smell anything at all. But he did have, I don't know what he had with him, but 
he kept like the more he kept repeating himself he was getting all excited and he was uh, I thought he was drunk or on drugs or something like that because I couldn't understand him half the time right he was yelling crap I couldn't even understand okay so he was slurring his words but he didn't really smell of anything mm -hmm. at all I was didn't he, smell anything was he sweaty was he dirty was he clean well he didn't stink okay is he I didn't notice like greasy hair like a homeless person or anything like that okay. um, he just looked like a normal person to okay. me I mean he wasn't clean cut like like you guys like you're groomed mm -hmm. but he wasn't dirty because I didn't smell anything or see like nasty hair or anything what what age about what age would you put him in late 30s okay. and of course it begs the question I, I don't know that we just asked you straight have you ever seen this guy before no don't know him um, he doesn't look like somebody you've seen somewhere before with somebody else I mean as you as you remember back you know as you picture him in your mind um, there there is you cannot make any link between this guy and and you No, I mean, I wasn't looking directly at his face. I was trying not to look at him. I do know when he did get in, there was something familiar about him, but I don't know him. So I don't know if I, I don't know. He seemed familiar, like I should know him, but I do not know him. Russ would appeal his conviction and the case would go to trial again. This time, justice would prevail and Russ's conviction would be overturned. After spending three years in prison, he was finally a free man. It would seem that Pam was not very happy that Russ had been released from prison. Shortly after his release, a blonde woman would be seen driving around in Pam's car, claiming to be a Dateline producer. She would ask the people she met, if they would be interested in reenacting a 911 call. The police found this out because one of the people that was asked became very suspicious of the interaction. Before interviewing Pam, the police knew that someone who matched her description was trying to reenact a 911 call. They were also aware that the 911 call sounded staged and the evidence found on Louie had been planted there to frame Russ. But did he have any type of accent that was noticeable to you? I didn't know because he was he was bumbling, slurring, and at first, I didn't really notice anything, but like I said, he was getting so excited and stuff. He, as he was yelling at me, I mean, it was like he was drunk. I mean, he was, I literally, like his tongue was this thick. I didn't know what was going on. I figured he was on something, alcohol or something. I didn't know. I, I knew something was not right because as he was getting excited, it was getting worse. Okay. The slurring was getting worse. Yes. The stumbling on his yeah. words. And, okay. Yeah. I couldn't hardly understand what he was saying. I could pick out like certain words, but he said one phrase inside made no sense. He said, you know, I think he said it out in the garage or out in the car too. Um, something about killing my wife. Some. And I'm like, I don't know. I didn't say anything, but it was weird. His said, wording. He said that in the car. He set it out in a car yelling at me and when he was saying he was going to kill me. Okay. So what are the things, that, of the things that you could understand him say, what are the things that he said to you? He, well, at first it was kind of clear in the car because he wanted me to go to the bank to get Russ's money. And How did he say that? He said... He said some curse words, and then he said, we're going... We can say this here. Yeah, let like me just be. Tell us what he said. Yeah, well, I mean, okay. Yeah. Well, a lot I couldn't understand, Let's but he know. said when he first got in and he had the... I was... I think I was yelling at him. I don't even remember. I think I was like, who are you? Get out of my car, blah, blah, blah. And he was like, bitch, we're going to the bank. And I'm like... And then my mind just starts swirling because I'm like, going to the bank, this is so freaking weird. And I'm like, I'm not going to the bank with you. Get out of my car. And he goes, bitch, you go, we're going to the bank. We're getting Russ's money. And, and he started getting all agitated and excited. And that's when I really, he was yelling things. I wasn't listening because 
I was forming how the hell I was going to get out of the car. So he was yammering crap, couldn't really understand him at that point. And my thought was to get the, the knife away and get the heck out of the car. That's all I was thinking about at that point. What he was saying, I don't know. As I ran into the garage, he ran after me. I heard the car door shut and he was yammering stuff again about killing me. Again, my focus was to get in the house. I knew I had my phone in my pocket. I was trying to dial 911. I think I did it three times before it went through on my cell phone. But then I was inside and he was trying to get the door. I was trying to hold the door. I couldn't get it locked then. And I was trying to get 911 on the phone. And he was saying stuff. And then the door flew open. He got in, it flew open, and I ran into the bedroom. He was yelling stuff. And before, as I was going in the bedroom, something again about killing my wife, him and Stevie. Me and Stevie, you're going to kill your wife. And I, so I don't know who that is. I don't know a Steven or a Stevie or a Steve. I don't know what he was talking about. He was so then, so but It was really hard. It's like his sentences weren't formed by then. Mm -hmm. And so none of it made any sense, but he did keep saying, get in the car. I ran in the bedroom. I tried to, you know, I shut that door. I was trying to get it locked, wouldn't latch, got a problem with the door. And um, I got my gun, turned around, got my gun, nice stand right there, and he was pounding on the door. And once it flew open, that's when I shot him. And I just kept shooting him, because he just kept standing there. How many times did you say you pulled the trigger? I unloaded the whole gun. Okay. So you pulled the trigger until stopped. it stopped firing? I just kept pulling until it stopped. Okay, so, and I, again, because I haven't been there yet, and I don't know what, I don't know what it looks like, um, did any rounds go, are, are there going to be any bullet holes in the door, uh, into the bedroom, or do you think that no. the door was fully no, I was in the bedroom. I understand I that, but you said the door flew open, so... I didn't yeah, know. I didn't start shooting until that door flew open and he was standing right there ready to approach into the bedroom. And I just started shooting and walking towards him because I, I wanted to be sure I hit him. Because everybody kept saying that's a little gun and blah, 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 and I could have better be close. So once that door opened and he was there, I just started shooting and walking towards him until I didn't have him on. Okay. Um. After they finished questioning Pam, they explain to her that they are waiting for more information from their bosses. While they wait, they begin talking with Pam about things unrelated to the attack. What's strange is Pam has just been attacked and she took the life of her attacker. Most people that would have gone through this experience would usually be emotional or in shock at what just happened. Um, you good? Anything I can get you? My stuff no, I'm some? supposed to be getting my husband. Yeah, I think Should you... I? Uh, Detective Wolf is gonna go down. Or Sergeant Wolf is gonna go down there and talk. Can to I you. call my lawyer? Yeah. Do I need my lawyer up here? Do you? Well, how long am I gonna be up here? You're up here voluntarily. No, I know, but we're not holding you. No, we're, I know, but how okay. long they're gonna kill me if I don't have one? Just because of everything that's been going on. Should I call them, or should, or are we gonna be here much longer? Okay, you are here. You are here of your own free will. Okay, okay. you have to make those decisions for yourself. Okay. I can't. Well, I didn't tell know you what, what you guys did. needed. No, let me let me tell you what, what we still have left to do. Okay, um, you know, in this incident, um, we need to make sure that we can separate your DNA from his DNA. So you guys have been married thirty-five years. Thirty-something. It's a long time in this day and age. Got married in. It's like 35, close, 33, 35, 35. You guys both around from Missouri originally? Mm-hmm. You grew up in this area? The hood. How long you lived out this way? Well, we lived in Florida for 11 years. And we moved Where back at? here, Naples. Why would you move from Naples back here? <laughs> I didn't like Florida. Why not? Well, Naples, which is super gorgeous. Yeah, it's everybody all, talks about it. It's all rich people. There you go. So, well, it's a service town. There's no real industry. I got you. The biggest employer was the school district. Yeah. So that ties you. Yeah. Um, I, we had our own business down there. We did okay. plantation shutters. But um, when we were down there 11 years, we did that and sold it and moved back after my dad died because my mom couldn't handle. So you you guys own your own business, H2 something? Now we do, yeah. What do you do? We flip houses. Oh. That's just my side. Because construction is what my husband does. Okay, so you buy houses that are 
in poor condition, in foreclosure, fix them up, and then sell them. Mm -hmm. So, like, I mean, do you just do that? Do you ever buy houses and then like just rent them out and be landlords? Mm -hmm. No, we've uh, done that. We did that, that down in Florida, yeah. I did? No. What's the problem with that? People don't like to pay rent. Well, yeah, of course, but you gotta make them. It's hard. It was hard in Florida because they got the Sunshine Act that you had to go through this big lengthy process to get somebody removed. To evict them. Yeah. Could be months, but the Sunshine Act says if you have kids, it's even longer okay. to get them out. And we tried. So you really we got had a condo down there that we rented out and so you really got to vet your ten your tenants and, and there's even no then, way to do that one right. of we one of them we had was an ex place yeah not on the force anymore no brainer right well he's an ex why is he it depends why is he an ex i know don't know but uh start skating and then we found out that that's what they do and then they move in the middle of the night type thing which they did you know squatters free so, so it's easier free. by so, time i mean it can take you a few months especially when he was good very nice clean kids and wow not this one you know and so that can go on for a few months and then when you finally figure out oh my god I'm getting scammed, gonna do I gotta it, do something. it's another three months through the eviction period and that costs you money just to deal with that time yeah. and money in the meantime no mortgage payment right i understand that so we did it and we're like i just don't like dealing with people like that so now that the housing market's kind of coming back is it affected your business at all yeah um not so much the housing market coming back but um because there's no inventory out there yeah the problem is people are buying foreclosures the right. million. now we'll see an influx of them losing them again because the real bad ones if you can't do it yourself people think oh i can do this but really you don't get what's in there a lot of them sit for a year two years empty which means broken pipes you mm -hmm. don't know it until you're All in the there the interior stuff you don't know we bought or looked at houses that have been halfway gutted people try and it's just too overwhelming it's a lot of money so you know? so your your husband works for another employer and he does yeah. that on the side yeah we do it outside we've done it since um gosh we've done it for about eight years so if you always well, we quit in 2008 when the market fell mm -hmm. we just quit because it just wasn't worth it and then we started back up a couple of years ago have you always worked in that type of in you always worked in that industry i work in insurance yeah no well, we just like to we've always renovated our own houses right so yeah, if you can do it, then there's deals out there. It's not bad. There it's is. Funny. The deals aren't out there anymore. That's well, no, I, yeah, I understand. I'm saying if they are. No, but. I mean, like, but the no inventory means banks are cranking up the prices of foreclosures. Right. So, doesn't the, make it worthwhile. Yeah. There's no free, there's no profit to be made. There's no profit. Yeah. Not fixed up like we fix them. Like, we'll do a whole new house for people inside, you know, kitchens, bathrooms stove refrigerator everything and there's just no margin anymore it's there, real hard to find one no your husband husband works construction is that he also doing carpenter type stuff there too then um yeah they do everything but when we had our own business he handmade plantation shutters which are the interior shutters uh -huh. and um that was his business down there so has he got a workshop at home he does everything in mm -hmm. well it sounds like a he did, industrious yeah. fellow well he did but we don't have one at this house we've only oh. been at this house a year okay so yeah no he, pretty much everything's in his truck okay you know, so he locks the doors on his truck park in the garage yeah, yeah. so yeah. yeah florida i wouldn't want to live in florida hot. but it's a dry heat it's no, not it's florida not. i was teasing they always, <laughs> they always say that one time no i my brother-in-law lives in Arizona. Now his is a dry heat, and he said, "Hot, still hot," because it's always a hundred something there. He's in Phoenix. I know. I, or I, Tucson. Heat is always heat. Yeah, it's, it's just hot. If you go outside and sweat, I don't care if it, your pores are open or closed. It right. Doesn't matter. In Florida, literally, it would be so humid. It's like August for six months. Yeah. You walk out and your pores go. Yeah, you don't want to be outside. And I just got tired of that. You know? At least here you get the heat, and then you get the fall, I like, and all I like the change. When I get sick of something, we're yeah. going into something else. Yeah, there's always a little there bit. There it was like 
had, like my sister-in-law lives in Minnesota, same thing, six months cold. I mean, I don't want that either. That's no. ridiculous, the snow and stuff. I like a little bit of it. Yeah, that's why it's nice here, because you get a little bit of everything. Like you said, you get tired of it once, and then all of a sudden here comes a change. And it was fun at first, and then the other thing you got is in the winter when it's really nice and you're looking forward to the great weather, town was three times, four times its size because yeah. of tourists. Oh, yeah. I've never been there, but I know a couple of people that they go down there. They treat your place like crap. Right. You can't get in restaurants. You can't get in anything because there's so many people there. Traffic's horrid because they're not going to work. Everybody's lollygagging around. And it got to be, Naples has gotten so big now that it's just, we're like, yeah. it's congested. And it's just it's not, so horrid. Yeah. So horrid. When you're, it's like a college town. When it gets taken over, it's like. You ever live in a college town? Mm -hmm. Never wanted to. Did you go to college? Where'd you go? Down in Florida. I started um, so up here. Did you go to the University of Florida? No. Florida down State? in Naples. What's the university? Is it a local or what is it? It's a private college down there. You had to go up to Fort Myers for part of it and then um, Naples for the rest of it. So, yeah. What would you get your degree in? Um, MIS, Management Information Systems. Sounds exciting. It was. <laughs> I haven't done it in a long time. I've been doing insurance for a long time. Surprised you guys are entrepreneurs. Why don't you do your own insurance? You ever had your own insurance company? No. Like your own office or whatever? No? Too much sales. Well, what's H2 LLC? You're doing sales there. No, not really. I mean, you put a house up for sale. I mean, it's your sale. You're putting it for sale. Right, but when you do like insurance and stuff, you gotta go out. You're and talking get, commission and yeah. all that type. So that's a that's a tough business. Especially in this day and age, with the big ones like State Farm and all those people. Oh, I get that. To be an independent means you get people that couldn't qualify for all state or nationwide. So you got kind of, issues there. And kind then, of back to dealing with the uh, renter type situation. Yeah. You know, we started. I started that in Florida. I was going to work for an independent. And um, they, their problem is, is when people need their tags, they go get insurance. They get their tags. I have insurance. You know that. Right. Yeah. Apps. Done with it. Got my card for like the show or whatever. And all we did was chase people, call them, your payment's due, your payment. And I hate to say it, but, you know, I worked for uh, the big chains, let somebody else have that headache. And that's why they weed them out. Yeah, I wouldn't be good in sales. I think you would. No, I'm not a salesman. And you had, I hope she got that on film. I don't know if she did my, I don't think she did my forearms. I just noticed that scratch. She did my uppers and my hands, but I don't think she did that. I just noticed it. Let me see if she's still on her. Let me see if she's. I sound good down. Well, it, it, it is a big deal. I had some bruising starting up there. But she if she a, wants to, she got this. Yeah. Okay. She got all that. But you're not sure if she got the scratch there. Well, I did this for my hands. I don't think she took it on my arms. I was gonna ask because uh, there's no no detail to my new. So let me let me go ask her. I'll be right back. Thanks. Go. He's so we obviously we've got officers on the scene there. I, they're still going. They're still doing what they do. Um, but I'm trying to call and arrange to get you some uh, some a change of clothes. So do you have some particular clothes that you would want? If I could direct somebody to something like just pants, shirt, mm -hmm. something because you know in, we we're gonna have his clothes. We in this case we we'll get your clothes too. Um, yeah, is there they something just want to grab more? off the shelf a pair of jeans and any top hang in there. Where's My the, the closet? shelf in the? Master, the master right, the yeah, and it's really organized. So, okay. so any je any pair of jeans off the shelf, mm -hmm. and then a shirt from just hanging, hanging short sleeve, long sleeve. I don't. I, that's all my summer clothes. I okay, so just any that. any old shirt will do yeah. with with jeans, and then um, to make sure there's you stepped over them. So we're probably going to want to double check, swab the bottoms of the shoes oh. and stuff like that too. So do you have another pair of shoes that we might be able to? to any flip flops grab that are laying on the floor, good. Flip flops. Okay, yeah, you can have these. Okay. Sounds good. So actually, we'll get some paper bags and stuff. Um, Sorry, I should yeah, we'll, I should have remembered that because I walked all over them pretty much. No, you're okay. I was. Pam is currently awaiting trial in this case. Prosecution believes that Pam went looking for someone to help stage a 911 call, and that's when she found Louis. Louis would go with her to her home and help her stage the phone call. While the call was being made, Pam would use her gun to take his life. Afterwards. She would place the note into his pocket, 
which named Ross as the man who hired Louis to get his life insurance money back. For now, we will have to wait and see what happens next. Thank you for watching. I will see you next time here on the Red Tree Crime YouTube channel.